Okay, hey everybody, it's Brett here. Welcome to Crypto Mastery. Uh, today's Tuesday, August 29th. Got some uh, big news to cover here, so we're just going to dive right into it. Markets are up significantly here today. Based on the big news here of today that uh, Grayscale has apparently won their appeal. Now, it's not over yet, so we're going to unpack this a little bit. But the uh, bottom line is the Bitcoin's up 5%, Ethereum up 3.8%, BNB up 4%. So this may be the catalyst that we really needed to see in these markets. And uh, so... Let's go ahead and uh, kind of unpack this for a little bit. Um, diving into the news, a lot of this is the same, but the news as uh, as it is now. So the court granted Grayscale's petition for the review of the Bitcoin ETF case against the SEC. Now, I do have the actual filings up here, which we'll unpack a little bit from the U.S. State's Court of Appeals. And uh, by the way, if you're watching this on the YouTube replay, please like and subscribe to the channel. It kind of helps us get these done and uh, get this information to you. All right, so go ahead and do that now. Let's see. So here's the article from Cointelegraph. Grayscale wins the SEC lawsuit. That's not exactly true. Uh, it doesn't guarantee the eventual listing, but it does It does say that, uh, we'll just go through and read this. The Court of Appeals judge ordered that Grayscale's petition to re be reviewed, have their, um, to have their be granted, their review granted by the SEC. Previously, the SEC had denied Grayscale's petition to become the first spot Bitcoin ETF. So basically what they're saying is that uh, they need to go review that. So that is what this is saying, that uh, the court's saying SEC must go do the review. So it's a step closer and um, uh, not a confirmation, but we'll unpack that a little bit too, because uh, this other uh, article here, um, we'll, we'll find it uh, basically suggests that uh, and, and fills in the blanks here. So here it is. So the SEC, uh, they just basically must review it. And so with all of this pointing toward also the BlackRock ETF getting approved, it's looking like this is it's closer, potentially closer and sooner than we think. Now, it could be indie time between now and say March, April. Typically, uh, you know, BlackRock will usually get their ETFs approved and it's usually like six months in that review process so anyway and it certainly could be sooner so uh either way if blackrock gets approved then it's much more likely that gbtc does or grayscale and similarly if grayscale gets in there first also very likely that blackrock will and then fidelity and then we'll see all those dominoes fall so it's very interesting news and we want to see how this plays out but it does uh, seem that um, the markets are rallying and turned in response to this we'll just pull up a chart here and i've been saying and if you guys were here last week i've been saying that you know we should have a rally here it's funny how uh, the charts tend to back up what the news is and you guys have heard me say this a dozen times or a hundred times show me the charts and i'll tell you the news well let's just turn off all the drawings here we see this little big push up here uh up to the 21 day moving average exponential moving average and but i was also suggesting that hey we should bounce off these levels anyway and uh, start pushing higher and may see something like this play out which would be kind of a head and shoulders pattern so we're sort of seeing that uh, happening right now so i'm going to be careful with this and that it's that it could be a sell the news type of event and uh, again, uh, you know, if this does push up over the next few weeks and starts topping out around 30,000 and starts to decline, you know, then I think we have a head and shoulders forming. We want to be really careful because a break down below the neckline here, you can see I have it measured out, takes us down to right around where that CME gap is around 20,000. So now it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. But these will be ideal levels to start dollar cost averaging if we do get back down to fill that CME gap. Now, because this class is really about our indicators, I wouldn't blindly just buy that level. I will be watching for the ERI to confirm and then the trend strength indicator around those regions. And that would be Mark my words, that will be an ideal time if we get there, an ideal time to start entering the markets and loading up on Bitcoin. Uh, it's not financial advice, but from an educational standpoint, this would be an ideal point of very strong support that uh, we could start seeing buying. And it could even come sooner. That's why I've drawn this, this box wider than this. The CME gap is down here in the 20,000 range. But uh, the box here I've, I've drawn to include the Fibonacci golden pocket here. 
And uh, so uh, with that, uh, you want to be watching this is that 618 to 65 level. So anywhere in this range, we could see some bounce action and see the uh, bottom put in. Now, these are certainly volatile markets. Anything can happen. There are scenarios where we could see a retest down of the $15,000, $16,000 zone down here. But uh, at this point, I'm not seeing that. I think it's more likely we push up higher, we come down, we see kind of some kind of a break. Um, or the other way that would be invalidated is if we sort of saw a higher low and the head and shoulders becomes invalidated. Either way, probably some sideways action here in September. Everyone's saying it's going to be a down month. Uh, it's September is traditionally a down month, but there's so much consensus there that September is going to be bad. I'm going to take the under on that and say, I think it could be a big rally month if uh, some of these catalysts play out. And, and that's what you see in the crypto. The most unlikely scenario usually plays out. Uh, so I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But I uh, will certainly want to watch the uh, indicators here, both on the daily and weekly basis. What's interesting here, just to open these up, however, is that, uh, uh, I'll hide this for now, is that not only did we have an ERI trigger here, and uh, we do have a new version of the ERI, ERI Pro, that we're playing around with. It's just really interesting. I'll show you in a moment. And um, But just to stick with our normal indicators, that early reversal indicator triggered down in here. And now we're getting what? We're seeing the trend strength indicator turning up higher. So this is also a good zone for an oversold rally to happen, especially when we get above 20. So I'm going to set an alert. It looks like I have an alert there already. But here's how you can set that alert crossing up over that 20 line. And what I'll do is modify that and just to say TSI above to breaking 20 or above 20. Sometimes you just use a greater than sign, whatever you want to say and give yourself a signal because these alerts, sometimes they happen and you forget why you set the alert. So I like to give myself an intention or a direction in there. Okay, so, but we want to wait for that 20 line to break for confirmation on a closing basis, right? We want to make sure that it closes and doesn't kind of whipsaw back. Take a look at the weekly here. It does have some room to come down still on the weekly basis. You know, our, our even better scenarios are when the weekly is coming up out of that 20 zone. Okay, so, you know, there's a number of things that could happen here. It could push up higher on the daily and then drop again with that head and shoulders, come down in this zone like we saw here, and then October, November really take off. I have been talking to my trader buddies and a friend of mine who named Juan, who's a cycle trader, saying he thinks uh, November is when the bull rallies, the bull run starts to really begin. So, you know, we've got some time on this. You know, it's kind of this accumulation year. 2023 should be an accumulation year. And uh, and then we see 2024 really start seeing the buying. So it's still a great time to be dollar cost averaging into these things, uh, not betting the farm. But uh, starting to, to kind of buy at these levels at these signals that we see when we start to see them. I'm going to jump back over to the daily. And uh, if this is also showing the signal line starting to turn green. So this is bullish. We want to trust our indicators. So I do think we see follow through over the next few days. And it kind of starts seeing the makings of the head and shoulders, that right shoulder pattern. Again, the measured move here because of the distance from the head to the neckline, a break below the neckline puts it right in here, that CME, right in that CME gap in that zone. So that's why I've drawn it that way. So um, anyway, um, that covers that. Let's kind of unpack the news a little bit. And if you guys have any questions, we make sure I've got the, uh, the chat up. Uh, I don't see any uh, chat questions yet, so that's fine. I'll keep going. So basically, though, this is uh, big news, and this is the big news of the day that's rallying the markets. So uh, it said the SEC did not provide or offer any explanation to why Grayscale was denied. So again, that's why the judge is saying, hey, you've got to review this and give reasons, some reasons and rationale why they denied the the uh, spot ETF. Okay, so, uh, and again, it doesn't guarantee that they'll win. This is a perfect scenario, by the way, for the whales and the big money traders to kind of sort of start pushing price higher and start using the retail 
traders, that's you and I as liquidity. So they're selling into that, that sell on the news. So I, I do feel that this is an ideal setup here for a head and shoulders pattern. So we start seeing more news coming out about the Bitcoin ETF, you know, and then it kind of fizzles out. And then that's when here where the bigger institutions are selling uh, to take some profits off the table. Now, I do think that on, on a macro scale, there's accumulation happening in this range. Also, uh, it's one of our students uh, here that's joining us, was pointing out in our M3 Active Trader that there's a rumor MicroStrategy has been buying, uh, or sorry, that uh, BlackRock has been buying up a lot of MicroStrategy. And so that would certainly uh, be a, an indication that uh, there's a big rally incoming if BlackRock is starting to quietly do that. And uh, of course, uh, MicroStrategy has become a surrogate for Bitcoin because they are regulated if they, uh, you know, the bigger pensions and funds that can't yet invest in in uh, something like Bitcoin because it's unregulated, they can buy a publicly listed stock like MicroStrategy, which they may be doing as, you know, because MicroStrategy owns so much Bitcoin and also is planning to buy up to $750 million more with a follow-on common stock offering, which hit the news last week. So very interesting times. And, um, you know, we are uh, still a chance we're going to get, we're reaching out to Michael Saylor and a number of big name speakers for our upcoming Crypto Summit. Uh, just interviewed Mark Yusko, which was an excellent interview. And uh, so stay tuned for that. All right. Um, so with this pattern here, I'll just put this away. Let's see if we can find some other news and anything that's breaking. Because this is just brand new coming out on the wires here just about an hour and a half ago. So uh, federal appeals court has ordered the SEC to vacate its rejection. They have big fancy words to say, uh, you know, um, put it aside and review it to the trust issuers bid to convert the grayscale Bitcoin uh, trust into exchange traded fund. All right, lawyers have to use all these big fancy words. Um, so, but the bottom line is if we, the US is about to get its first spot ETF and that also paves the way for BlackRock, which the reason that's important, they have $10 trillion, give or take more or less, what's a few trillion among friends to at, deploy into Bitcoin. And so the reason that, as we talked about last week, that it didn't really move the needle when the first futures ETF was released, that it was actually the top of the markets back in 2021. But that uh, didn't matter because futures are cash settled and they're basically bets on the underlying without having to own the underlying. So it's important you realize that. And that's why uh, the uh, Bitcoin futures ETF didn't uh, have any effect on upward price. A spot ETF would require purchasing and owning spot Bitcoin, which would drive the prices higher. Now, there are some other derivatives that could be employed there, and uh, we're not going to get into that. But uh, for the most part, where we could see face melting gains in Bitcoin and the rest of crypto is we see BlackRock coming in and start buying everything because of the supply shock. And at some point, uh, quantitative easing is likely to come back in these markets. Uh, speculation out there on a real estate uh, crisis, uh, you know, Evergrande in China may have some spillover uh, over here, or we may have uh, something similar and under boiling under right now. The commercial uh, market has been decimated from COVID. Large office buildings are empty. Nobody's really talking about that. But uh, at the end of the day, that's uh, that's a problem. And so, you know, there's a lot number of things. I was just reading uh, and learning, uh, watching something earlier today, how we've never had kind of this cycle, I um, forget the specifics of where raise rate, don't raise rate, raise rate, don't raise rate, and sort of going back and forth. Uh, and um, it, it, it just signals that very uncertain times right now. So you want to be careful, but I think we also want to be mindful of what would we regret not doing now, looking back six months or a year from now. Okay, and I was uh, another interview I just gave for the crypto summit where someone said, "Listen, you know, uh, a year from now, it's almost impossible that it won't be higher." Now, uh, you know, to take that, uh, do your own research, of course, but I, I think that's probably true. You know, I don't think we go below the worst case scenario if we were to retest the summer lows. 15,000, 16,000. I don't see that happening. But uh, a year from now, I think we're at least back up where over we are now. So, you know, um, there are variables always. Uh, there's the rumor that Binance might be in trouble. What could send 
crypto into the lower lows and even some speculating, uh, which I, again, I don't agree, but if Binance were to fail, uh, then it could send crypto uh, much, much lower. Now, that would that is something that the Black Rocks of the world would like to accumulate there. So we have to realize and just be mindful that there's a number of forces at work here and uh, to watch the charts, use the indicators that we have because they have been very, and they've been excellent in telling us which way things are going. So as uh, swing traders, uh, we can certainly ride these swings up and down and uh, in trade off the price action, which is what our indicators kind of share with us. So uh, let's do this here. I want to dive over into uh, the the inside of it. Let's see. Uh, there's a lot of a lot to unpack with that. Let me just kind of jump back over to the actual uh, and the release here, which was some um, uh, it was just came out today. So originally submitted in March, the uh, Court of Appeals uh, decided that today uh, from Grayscale and the SEC. So the SEC is starting to kind of uh, get beat up a little bit. And I think that's the lesson here is that, you know, and we've heard us say, like Victor Hugo used to say, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. You know, the uh, the, the 800 pound gorilla that was the SEC is now flipping. It's becoming Bitcoin and crypto. And you can see little wimpy Gary Gensler in the corner now with his boxing gloves, kind of like, maybe I shouldn't be fighting this, uh, this gorilla in the ring. Uh, so there's an analogy for you. I just think it's... Um, you know, it's not done yet. The fight isn't over. We're on round three of a 12 round fight. But uh, so far, it's starting to flip the uh, the tables. So SEC won round one and two. But uh, Ripple uh, just recently won their case. You know, again, there's some appeals potential there. So it's not over. But, um, you know, these are important considerations. So basically, though, just there's a lot there's too much to unpack here. I You know, I would encourage you to Google this. And I don't have a direct link. It's a PDF, but you can uh, Google the uh, the SEC Court of Appeals decision. Uh, this particular one is right on the Grayscale website. So actually, maybe I can share that link. It's not clear what that link is saying. And I don't have the uh, copy, but it looks like grayscale.com uh, slash GBTC dash decision dash 829.pdf. Yeah, it'd be great if I could just copy that, but that's not showing up in my, uh, so if you guys can take a screenshot of that or just Google it, uh, you can find this. But I would encourage you going through this. So there's got to be clues and I'll do that as well. That, um, you know, it looks like uh, just some some highlights jumping out. Where do I see this grayscale presented uncontested evidence that there is a 99.9% .9 correlation between Bitcoin spot market and the CME futures contract prices. And, and that's, I think, one of the big arguments against the spot ETF because they felt that it could be too easily manipulated. That's more true of the futures ETF than uh, the spot because they actually have to go buy it. The correlation is not a coincidence. Bitcoin futures price, yeah, as I was saying, Bitcoin futures prices are ultimately based on spot market prices. And I think that's actually what they're saying because the CME is where the futures would be. So they're actually saying that um, there's no difference here or spot ETF would be would be less uh, ripe for manipulation. Again, I've just seen this for the first time, so forgive me, I'm just skimming this. But uh, as I was saying, your Bitcoin futures trade based on predicted settlement prices, in turn calculated using the Bitcoin reference rate, and that aggregates spot prices from multiple exchanges. Uh, none of this is really re relevant here. I think I'm getting closer to the TLDR, which it's going to suggest that basically uh, it's going to be hard to manipulate the uh, prices on this. Let's see. The CME's surveillance can be reasonably relied upon. Yeah, that's part of it. I think their argument was is that uh, be because there's not a big brother watching, then uh, that the, you know, it was ripe for manipulation. But they're saying here that the CME's surveillance, for lack of a better word, can be can reasonably be relied upon to capture the effects on the CME Bitcoin futures market caused by person attempting to manipulate proposed futures. And so um, that basically says, hey, that this can be policed. It is policed. So your argument to not allow it is is not a good argument. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, so here, this is what we're getting towards. So the commission concluded fraud in either market could be detected, could be detected uh, by surveillance of the CME futures market. Okay, so that's that's interesting. They're saying that the, by watching the CME uh, surveillance that it could police both the futures and the spot ETF ETFs. So that, that's interesting. Uh, and that's also leads toward more likelihood this will get approved. Okay, because it's saying that the surveillance sharing agreements with the CME are identical and should have the same likelihood of detecting fraudulent or manipulative conduct in the market for Bitcoin and Bitcoin futures. There's the TLDR right there. So uh, initially, uh, despite the similar commission, SEC being the commission, rejected Grayscale's proposed ETP uh, and approved two Bitcoin uh, ET. I, I don't know why they're calling it an ETP. Um so some aggressive sort of fraud time listings under surveillance sharing agreements with markets that are related to listing exchange, blah blah blah. If fraud or manipulation occurs, a surveillance sharing agreement in theory should identify a problem and provide the necessary deterrent to manipulation because they facilitate availability of information needed to fully investigate a manipulation if it were to occur. Again, lawyers have to over uh, language everything. Uh, and no offense to recovering attorneys, by the way, they're my favorite type, <laughs> but uh, actually, no, sometimes they, they are uh, uh, useful, but of course, uh, it's really hard to get through all of this. So I'll, I'll read through and unpack it. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll just get to the bottom line here. And so where this is the end uh, and uh, see what their conclusions are. But uh, it, um, it, it is a lot to hear. Commission failed to explain. And basically, all this saying is essentially this: that the SEC failed to, to explain why their rationale does not apply to grayscale. And um, okay, the, the NYSC ARCA is a trading exchange. A lot of day traders use that, and so a lot of trade flow goes through, through that. So basically, saying that they have the same surveillance sharing agreement with the CME. And the CME Bitcoin futures market is robust as the commission recognized in its previous orders. Because the spot market is deeper and more liquid than the futures market, manipulation should be more difficult. Guys, this is good. This really signifies and signals to me much, they're more likely to approve this. It's going to be harder for the SEC to say and rationalize not approving this. And, you know, so here's what the thing they, uh, the GBTC, more than likely could and should be approved before BlackRock. BlackRock applied late, and but it's kind of like having uh, David and Goliath, you know, David uh, being uh, GBTC and Goliath is, is standing behind saying, all right, you've got, a, you've got me backing you up. So um, that's all I think we want to unpack here. Again, I would, I would go to this and uh, and read this yourself, but uh, this is uh, this is good news. And uh, so anyway, there's more there, but we don't want to use all of our time here. So basically, we're seeing that in the markets here, getting a nice little rally. It's coming off the highs a bit. So we have the one hour and the four hour showing some uh, nice signs of uh, movement, uh, getting a little overbought. But so I do think we'd see some kind of a pullback here and, and but then to continue higher. So uh, these are these are good signals. And. Let's see, what is this black line here? I'm not sure, the very strange looking black line that just kind of abruptly goes below. I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, uh, is that a is that a line? I don't know what that is. Okay, I know what that is. So basically, that's the one hour, four hour. Let's jump over here again. Our So Bitcoin out now up 6.63%. Bitcoin, Ethereum up 5%, getting a broad market rally here. Um, great to see that. Let's jump over to uh, Crypto Panic. And then, then we'll dive into some more of our indicators, get a, a good look at this. And uh, on a kind of, what does this mean for the weekly time frame? Because, you know, we had just broken down on the weekly time frame from some key support levels. So, you know, it's uh, to flip back above that, that quickly is, is also never really been done. I don't think uh, how Grayscale Transform Bitcoin Trust ETF will work. So potentially when that gets approved, so lots of news here. Uh, we've already unpacked this. Is there anything else? That's what I want to see. If there's anything else that we haven't looked at yet. So Bitcoin transaction volume plunges to a three-year low. It's uh, it's not a bearish sign. Usually things get really dormant before they explode. Uh, but that's really the only news here that um, is worth talking about, it would seem. 
So big new stand on Bitcoin. I don't see anything else worth looking at here. And uh, so let's just jump over. But um, let's just unpack here a little bit. What does it really mean? The well, we did. Uh, we just went through all this. Basically, you guys can do your own research on that. Why this matters. And yeah, we've already talked about that. It just means that SEC has to review it, but they have to review it publicly. And instead of what they have been doing and just saying, no, you're not compliant, like they're doing to Coinbase, even though Coinbase met with them regularly saying, how do we become compliant? So uh, this is, I think, going to force the hand of the SEC to justify why they are making these decisions and enforcing through regulation rather than having clear regulatory rules. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, let's jump over here to some other things and let's take a look at uh, a slightly different chart here. Now, this is Bitcoin as well. The other side of this, though, with this trend line, the you know we have this head and shoulders here drawn, but still the potential of pushing higher. So. Uh, with that would be invalidating the head and shoulders if it can get back above the 32,000 level, which I've been seeing. So that's that key line in the sand. If we, so here, here's what I am really saying here is that uh, if we get above 32,000 on a closing basis, the rally is back. Okay, that's the line in the sand. If we break below this 25,300, which we almost did, you know, that's another line in the sand that we're so far holding. And if we zoom out a little bit, let me just share again why that 25,300 level was so important here. It was, it was such an important uh, level that uh, all the way back, almost back here, but really it was the most important level back in the uh, 2022 market decline because it it dropped down through that level, came up, acted as strong resistance. Let me make sure you can see this. I mean, resistance here rejected came back all the way down for of course ftx happened right there came down pushed up higher again rejected 25.3 you've heard me say generally strong support resistance levels uh break on the third or fifth attempt and that's been my experience for many years so one and two and then the third time it broke above 25,300, pushed up higher came back retested that 25.3 level so we've now retested 25.3 a second time. If we can hold and hold this long-term trend line, then we are then we're okay. You know, we can that that's very strong support. If we zoom out here uh, all the way back into this area, let me turn off the indicators just so it's not so messy. And uh, even the uh, moving averages here for a moment, because the only thing we're really watching on this. Okay, so the trend line, I need to have some of these indicators on. Right, right. Okay. So uh, sorry about that. Basically here, all the way back down, all the way back to September, uh, 2017, bounced off of this, came back, uh, acted as resistance support. It did break in the COVID crash, but uh, held his support through here, held his support through here. Again, FTX is the only reason that we can see that this trend line didn't hold. So uh, once it got back above this trend line, it did break a little bit here. So it's not, not, not a foolproof trend line support, but it does appear to be holding at these two different levels. So we really have to see here, you have got two to two dose scenarios. We have the head and shoulders play out, or we continue higher on this trend line. And uh, it wants, it may, at, this, at this point, yeah, it could drag out slowly through here and then break out. So we could see a scenario like this, which puts us later in the year. I think we, we're going to see it's hard to say. We don't know. Uh, I think this thing does push higher and then maybe it comes down and uh, then we see something like this. But that 32,000 level is a line in the sand. Either way, I, I want to see where we close today and then kind of signal if we have follow through. We certainly can make some money on this bounce on the head and shoulder, forming the right shoulder. And uh, so we want to see how, how that uh, kind of plays out too. So let's turn on the uh, 21 50 day moving average. Still below that. And I'd like to see what does the bull market support band look like? It looks like we're probably still stuck below that. So this rally may fade here in the next few days. Really what we want to see is a close above the 21 and 50 day moving average. And then I would suggest that we push up higher once we're back above 29,000, go up and retest this 31,000 level. But, uh, you know, volume still extremely low on these trades in the market. So also be wary of that. 
Uh, let's see uh, all about the grayscale because so we've all we've already unpacked this, but again, keep in mind the low volume is suspect. Okay, so uh, what we should see in the next few days, though, next week, even I don't know, Friday will be interesting because it's technically September first. However, it's Labor Day weekend. All the big Wall Street traders are still down the Hamptons, sipping champagne. They've nearly run out. They'll be back in the office next week because September is when they usually come back in and start deploying capital. So once the uh, Hamptons hangover wears off. All right. So anyway, guys, uh, not much more I can unpack there for you, but let's do this. You know, we should look at uh, our indicators, as I said, and the signal line going green. You know, we did have the hash ribbon indicator firing again right here in the last week, which is a good sign. That means the miners are back uh, back to mining and uh, and doing that profitably. So, you know, that's a good sign. Our trend indicator, let's go ahead and add that on here. We don't need the hash indicator right now. So we want to see when we start seeing alignment on these so that uh, the more that line up, of course, that's when our trades are where we are our best performing trades are when they start to uh, line up here. So with the uh, trend indicator, let me just add that uh, back to the charts. So while that loads, make sure I have the right one because I've got a couple different versions of this that uh, should be uh, the right one there. And then we've got something new that is our eri pro and hopefully there this is going to work on this one i don't know i had this loaded here just yet i might have to refresh my browser so that our, our newer indicators show up so with that in mind let me just do that quick refresh i don't okay actually it didn't save i gotta have to do that over sorry guys so uh back in here the volume indicator oh it's uh, switched over to uh yeah you have to remember to save these charts before you hit the refresh so I'll do that now, then I'll do a hard refresh. That reloads all indicators. So from time to time, you probably wanna do that. Uh, we do push out updates uh, to our indicators uh, from time to time. So let's see, you know, why is this not loading? I may have to reload that one more time, you guys. So uh, at any rate, uh, the let's do that. I'll close this down there and I'll hit save. And then a hard refresh, control R, and then I'll reload that chart and indicators. But again, I want to just, even without that, the ERI TSI starting to kind of bottom out here. Wait a minute, it keeps reloading Hedera. Bear with me. ERI TSI and signal are all green. Again, if you're using your trend checklist, uh, the uh, trend trading checklist, success checklist, you can grab this at moonstream.io slash checklist, I believe it is. And uh, so let me make sure I get that. So www.moonstream, you can get this free checklist, IO and trade. Is it just checklist? If uh, the team is listening, uh, if you give me this link again. It's uh, not always easy to remember. And uh, anyway, that's redirecting somewhere else. Sorry, guys, we'll get that for you. So um, let's see. And then you can uh, you can always go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com slash CM checklist. But that's uh, so it's tricky for people to remember. Anyway, we'll, we'll get that to you guys in a moment. Point is the trade checklists are how you can evaluate these trades. You want to see when these start to line up. The ERI check, the TSI going red to green, a signal line. That's three out of four. That's a good enough signal for me often to get into a trade. So once that sort of closes above the 20 line, remember we set an alert, it's getting real close to that, but I wanna see, so if it triggers above this by the end of the today, I would suggest that's a good buy signal for a short-term swing and uh, certainly has more of these aligned. All right, let's take a look also at our dynamic ATR. So that's a good one to look at too. And all right, so let's add that to uh, the average true range. So ATR, that's uh, this one here. Okay, and so that's still, now here's this interesting, this pay attention because this is our potential reversal candle on the ATR. When we see that yellow bar, it's on the verge of going to bullish and in the entry mode. And that's a good way to catch these rallies. So we don't always see that uh, reversal candle, but that yellow candle signifies that it's about to switch 
And uh, similarly, when it goes uh, to blue, often it's about to head lower. So this this is a possible reversal candle to the upside. So we want to keep an eye on the daily ATR. If it goes, if it turns to green and says entry, that's another reason to get back in. And uh, if we do zoom in a bit, our volume has picked up. So it's always helpful to pick in. It's just or zoom in when you have to, but just not anywhere near the volume back in not March and the earlier part of the year. So that's really what we're waiting for uh, for safer signals. Let's see. I uh, don't see any questions in the chat. If you do have any or you want me to look at anything, uh, go ahead and let me know. But uh, I think that's about all we want to unpack here. Although, let's see if I can load that new ET, uh, ATR uh, ERI. So we have so many of these uh, indicators there. And this is the ERI Pro. So that's going to be in our invite only scripts. Sorry about that. Here is uh, ERI. And uh, why is it coming up here? All right. I have to find it the hard way. Might be in my favorites. Let's try that. Uh, it's not. Okay. That's strange. All right, we'll do it the hard way, invite only, go down, and it may have a slightly different name. That's why it's not coming up on a search. Uh, it's uh, it's a little different font. It's strange. So anyway, um, the ERI Pro. All right, let me guys show you this a little bit, you guys. And so similar to the ERI, I'm going to overlay it onto the chart. And um, so it gives us a little bit of noise. You do have to do the merge. It all scales into one on the right. And I'll do a little quick of a refresh there. So basically, and I want to turn off the uh, ATR so it doesn't conflict. Great. Okay, so here's what I want to call your attention to. See these green boxes? These are, uh, and this is money flow. And um, so what we want to do is watch for this. I know you guys don't have this yet, but uh, we're going to make that available soon. And uh, the option to get that, just still beta testing it. But these are, this is money flow. See these green boxes are very good at telling when the rally is going to continue. Uh, red box is not so good. We ha had seen one recently and uh, it seems to have gone away. So we, what we really want to don't want to see, or maybe that was a weekly time frame. Uh, where was that? Uh, we're still learning this a bit, but um, yeah, that these money flow boxes on the monthly time frame and weekly really interesting and powerful. So we, we'd like to see that money flow come back in and see these green boxes to confirm we have a sustained rally. Uh, let's um, I turn this off briefly and look instead at the weekly candle. Now, also of notice here, as uh, this is a bullish engulfing candle on this weekly basis, we are a couple days into the week. So we do want to see that hold. If this candle can hold here or above, get above, back over 21 and 50 week moving averages, uh, that's also bullish. So just to stay consistent, if you're doing your trade checklist here, uh, coming in and uh, there's in here also one for bullish engulfing candles, you know, and is it above a rising trend line? Is it above the 21 day and 50 period EMA? Yes. So the more of these that you can have on the bullish side, the more likely it's going to continue going higher. And uh, so there's some more advanced setups in here as well. So uh, at any rate, uh, one of them is, is going to be bullish engulfing somewhere in there. But you guys get the idea. And the more that are in positive territory, the better. Okay, so uh, let me just see here. And okay, I'll get that link for the checklist here from the team. Great. All right, guys. So anything else you want to look at uh, in the chat? The uh, question, what is the ATR indicator called? Yeah, Jay, you've got that in your Crypto Mastery indicators. And by the way, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, just go to CryptoMastery.online to find out about our specials. Uh, somebody did write in and say, do you have a lifetime offer for these uh we uh, talked to joe and we do we're we're going to say yes we can we can do a lifetime offer on that if anyone's interested in uh, doing that the atr is this one here jay and it switches from entry to exit and back and forth it's called dynamic atr so you can read about it on the crypto mastery.online site 
and there should be more information on that. But as far as inside of the charts, if you just come up under the indicators area under invite only. Once you're a Crypto Mastery uh, member or an M3 active trader, so you just type in ATR, it's this dynamic ATR. And uh, okay, thank you team. So the checklist here, I'll give you that in a moment. Uh, that way it's called ATR entry. It's called dynamic ATR. And uh, this is great, especially on shorter timeframes as well. So if you wanted to add it to say your one hour, four hour here, that's a good one. Even for day trading, it's been uh, very ex it's been excellent for that too. And uh, getting in these early, because right here's a good example. So that uh, we saw the exit sign right there. And sure enough, this fell off. That was a good early indication. It was time to get out. But uh, a, the uh, ERI, the ERI hadn't quite triggered. The TSI had gone down. I mean, yeah, that's why it's good to watch all of these because this thing flipped bearish on the ATR there. That's bullish down in this range on the one hour. But um, the more of these that align, the more signals you have. So again, these are developed by our, our quant engineer and professional trader partner. Uh, these are for serious uh, crypto traders that really want to help time the markets and uh, how to time your entries and exits with laser-like precision. This has been our secret weapon since we started using these. Uh, they're excellent. And uh, those of you here live know that and in the Crypto Mastery classes. So if you'd like to attend these classes live weekly, you can sign up and get these indicators again at cryptomastery.online. Uh, the uh, let me just move this out. Oh, here's the link for great. Yeah, and the, the thank you. The the link is in the description on the YouTube page. So if you are watching the replay, you can get those by uh, going over here to Moonstream.io trade checklist, trade checklist, and that will redirect you. Uh, it should anyway to where you can get the checklist for free and uh, get this PDF download that I just showed you. It's an interactive PDF. So as you check off these boxes, it starts giving you a score of your tra trading your trading success score. And the higher that is, the more likely that's gonna be a winner for you. And these are mostly based off of our proprietary indicators. Some are other ones like the bullish engulfing candle, like I said. So, and uh, again, the more of these that align, the much more likely you have of success and assuming you know when to take some profits when the move is over and the cycle is completing, our indicators also give you that signal. Uh, but, you know, look, uh, one of my favorites uh, on the exit side, as many of you know, is the uh, Bollinger Band with three standard deviations. Usually that's a good signal also to know when to get out of those markets. Right now, all eyes are on this chart here. We can also look at a monthly. Of course, we we unpack this uh, deeper level and the and also look at the broader markets in the M3 Active Trader class, which is Wednesdays. And people, you can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, M3 is our highest level training for active traders. We do weekly classes on Wednesdays, daily interaction in the signal chat and updates in there. Uh, I teach those classes as well. And uh, of course, includes the indicators and members area and all kinds of other resources, uh, portfolio trackers, dollar cost averaging, interactive worksheets. So uh, you can read more about that at cryptomastery.online for the indicators only or moonstream.io slash M3 for our active trader program, our M3 active trader program, which is uh, the best out there that, uh, that we, we believe. We've been told we're top 3%. We'll take that. That's close enough. All right, some user reviews on those pages and you can read more about that there. So uh, anyway, um, that's about all I had prepared. We can still go look at some more charts. If you guys want to look at anything, I'll turn off the uh, ATR. Let's see some of the other charts you guys have wanted to see in the past. Well, let's let's look around at the market a bit. How about that? Uh, we have, we're have we looking at uh, Compound. Compound's not doing much uh ethereum you know the here's the thing where the this rally hopefully is not short-lived it's pushed right up to the 21 day ema so it just kind of needs to form some stability and above the the uh, moving averages but here is what is interesting and of interest for us is that you know this this cumu accumulation zone right here held 1630 pardon me uh held 
This is why we also also always hold and wait for the end of the day to make decisions because this candle breaking below this important support level back on uh, Thursday last week, you know, the shorts may have been loading up on that and then they got whipsawed and kind of maybe, I don't know, I... If we didn't have the GBTC news, I would say this is a bit of a short squeeze, but that's not uh, the case. Do have a nice bullish engulfing candle here. You know, the shorts kind of got their lunch handed to them if they were short back in here because it, of course, closed three times uh, after being below back up above 1630. So Ethereum, Ethereum looking interesting. You know, ERI would have been back in here and uh, the TSI is going above that 20 line. So Ethereum looking strong, want to make sure that it holds there. I'd like to see it break above 35. So you can set alerts on these things as we've been doing. So keep that in mind. And uh, I would always, again, name them. So break above uh, 35R, which is 35 resistance and um, by question mark. So at least I know what that alert means for me. So are my, you don't have to go back and reanalyze your chart. All right, so that's interesting too. The, 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 the signal line also turning green. Here's what I like too, is one, the, the signal line is such a great indicator, especially when it's oversold, you know, and it's come down a ways and then starts to flip. And then, and then it has a really nice chance to run. Uh, you know, this, you know, I, I do like looking for patterns in here. So here's another kind of support zone. This doesn't correlate to anything price related specifically, but it does, you know, it does tend to, you know, the, when in doubt, zoom out, we have this great kind of support zone on this uh, signal line that uh, we want to pay attention to. And uh, we have just coming off of it. So I would say, that's a pretty good confirming indicator. You know, certainly I wouldn't take any of these too too much too seriously by themselves, but because of the ERI back here, the TSI and the signal line, not sure why our trend indicator uh, isn't loading up here. Maybe I'll get rid of the trend, uh, the hash ribbons, and uh, we'll try that one more time. Okay, so let me just go back into the invite only and pull up the trend indicator. So there, well, there's a new one. I wonder if Joe, well, here, I think I pulled up the wrong one before. Let's pull up the Trend Pro. You guys don't have access to this yet. I'm not sure I know how to use it, to be honest. Uh, and it's not loading for me anyway. So we'll use this one. Okay. Okay. Well, no, we did get both of them to load. Uh, I don't have a, this is the Trend Pro. We're going to turn that off. I'm not ready to explain that yet. I need Joe to get, walk me through it. So uh, let's just look at the trend indicator. So we have a key forming. And uh, so we're waiting on the bell. You can also set alerts on these. This is our kind of longer term indicator saying that, uh, hey, that uh, here's the bell, that this thing is potentially it's a buy. So the key is, hey, a new trend may be forming. So we have that green arrow. Okay, I've got an alert on Ethereum. Let's jump back to that. My might, might give me any information, but we want to look for a bell on that. That'll be a further indication that uh, ETH is. Oh, it was the alert I just said. Set. I'm sorry. We're on ETH right now. Uh, I wanted to say when this turns into a bell, and that's what it should have been. I don't know why that triggered. It might have just teetered into. But I want to see it on the bar close. So I'm going to do once per bar close there. And that should kind of wait till the end of the day. I'm um, not sure. I have to see what happens there. But anyway, we'll be watching for that. Also in Bitcoin, uh, getting a key. So our signals are lining up. I would have, you know, the ERI was about a week ago. I like to see those in more tighter uh, time frames. But signal line about to go green. So TSI about to go green. You guys want to watch for this. You know, end of day. If we get that end of day, that would that would indicate that uh, we should continue higher. And then certainly, if by tomorrow's closing candle we get a bell indicator, that would be confirming. Okay, so we looked at that. We looked at the uh, ATR uh, as well. So you know, these signals are starting to align. We have this yellow candle that indicates a reversal candle on a daily basis. So that would mean it would flip to entry. So that would be even more in confluence. And looking like this market will continue higher. So I'm starting to feel more bullish on all of this. Uh, and that's uh, that's a good thing. So, all right. What else do we want to look at here? Any other coins that might be of interest? Solana maybe 
take a look at Solana and uh, I'll turn off this ATR, not giving us anything really positive on that. Solana is just not feeling very strongly and the, the tier twos will, will kind of, you know, the news is on the Bitcoin ETF. Uh, Ethereum will have some sympathetic news, but and even though Solana is up 5%, it's just hitting the upward resistance on the 21 and 50 day EMAs. So similarly with, with Polygon, a lot of these are just coming up and hitting resistance zones. So I wouldn't be jumping into any altcoins at this time. And uh, so keep that in mind. Many of these are very bearish. You at minimum, minimum, you want to see back above the 21 and 50 day EMAs. So the only other thing you might want to do, and we sometimes do in this class, is uh, as we hop over to the crypto pair screener and uh, see what is outperforming. So let's just uh, modify this a bit and go into our filters so we don't uh, have all of this showing at the same time. So we say, I don't need high, low price necessarily. Technical rating we want. Exchanges will modify a bit. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it as change percentage. And that's all I want to do there on the exchanges. Let's take a look at that. Uh, instead of all of these, let's just look at, say, Coinbase uh, and maybe Gemini, which will cover most of those. We could do Kraken. Let's just do Kraken. Uh, we're not going to do KuCoin and the other ones since since now it, it is harder, if not not possible to use those exchanges. Okay, on a strong buy, what do we have? Anything that looks interesting here that we're familiar with? Uh, Rune. This can't, this can't be right. Um, yeah, Rune is not up. Oh, that's a volume change. Forgot to turn that off. I thought it was up 40%. It's interesting, but so up 8.8%. Rune does look good on the chart. It's pulled back to its 21-day moving average. So I'm going to add that to our crypto mastery list to keep an eye on Rune. And uh, certainly that's one to watch. Uh, we like Rune in that in the next bull run. At some point, I think it's going to have a nice run. Let, let's open this up. Rune looking excellent here. And pulled back to its 21-day EMA. Had a good run previously. This is setting up nicely. ERI is there. The TSI is about to turn green. I would keep an eye on uh, Rune for sure and wait for any kind of breakout or sign of strength above these levels. Okay, so uh, there's that. Let's just open this back up and uh, see what else we have in here. Uh, UNF protocol. I'm not familiar with this. Let's check it out. Has a nice little un uptrend here. Maybe worth keeping an eye on this one. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, volume picking up. Not familiar with Unify protocol. Has been breaking out of this sort of downtrend. I, I think this is worth keeping an eye on here. Let's add it to our list. Oops, not the alert. We want to add it to our Watch list here. So uh, right here to Crypto Mastery. And uh, so volume picking up. This is interesting. We want to keep an eye on that. What exchange is on Coinbase? Uh, I would look at what what do they do? Maybe we'll look at this Unify protocol. Anybody looking for some opportunity in these markets? Do your own research, but... Okay. Blockchain solutions. Look at it. Coin market cap. See what we can find out. All right. Uh, let's see, what do they do about economics, concepts, simple network, stable coin, and gas token. Interesting, using stable coin as its gas token to remove transaction volatility inflation. Okay, great. I love to see innovation in the space. And here's their website if you want to learn more about this. Uh, cool website, very interactive. Okay. Well, we don't we don't really have time to unpack that. Interesting to see what they do. I would uh, personally, I'd set an alert here above seven dollars just to see. Hey, this thing's really taken off and is above a kind of a key point above this downtrending trend channel. We always try to identify these trend channels as soon as we can, and uh, to identify more importantly when the possibly a new trend channel is forming. Okay, so this uh, is giving breakout uh, possibility. So it's uh, you know we're agnostic to what they are. We want to see which ones have the best sort of trade uh, charts. So question is, uh, I need to get back to that crypto screen or where did it go? I've got to pull it up here. Yep, got it. So let's see anything else. We've got uh, that's not much movement. We've got TRB. I guess we can look at TRB up 13 percent. 
Mm, very low volume, doesn't uh, really showing us a whole lot. Let's look for some that we might be familiar with. And again, if you guys have any you want us to review, just put it in the chat. Uh, all right, looks rare. Sure, we could take a look at that, uh, Alex, no problem. And let me just skim through this. Uh, we've got change, uh, Fox USD, not familiar with Fox. Kind of an interesting chart. Let's take a look at this. So volume's picking up. Uh, no idea what shape shift does, but it's a nice bottoming pattern. And while there's certainly no guarantee on these, you know, we want to be looking for these that are putting in these nice bottoming patterns. And then the second thing to do is say, all right, from here to their old highs, this is one to keep an eye on, you guys. That's a 40X if it gets back to its old highs. So let's add this to our watch list. You know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, I don't know if there's any news on this, but uh, we could certainly say, what is it they do? Uh, Fox coin. I don't think that was really the name of it. Uh, Shapeshift Fox is the name of it. Okay. All right. Let's find out what they do. Multi-chain something. Uh, borderless cross-chain trading platform. Okay. That's interesting. So trading platforms make money. This is why I like those. They have a pro they have a monetization model. They're highly profitable because they're very good at taking our money. Uh, good investments for that reason. Portfolio manager for user self-sovereignty enables users to buy, send, receive, swap. So it sounds like a decentral exchange. Manage assets via mobile. Let's see a variety of software wallets, including the usual Trezor, Ledger, and a number of others. 100% self-custody platform. So you always control your keys. Interesting. I think this I think this is going to get a lot of attention. Have not heard of it before. Their governance and utility token Fox grants all trades makes trading more competitively priced than going directly to a DEX. So it is sort of a DEX competitor. Uh, it's been around since 2014. Originally as a privately held company in Switzerland. However, they reorganized as a fully decentralized DAO, it sounds like. Open source, all the source code and governance over the community fox token holders that's interesting uh let's see uh, it's founder okay well look here we go you guys bitcoin founder bitcoin pioneer eric Voorhees. so that's good to know certainly somebody knows what he's doing state of the decentralized models the only way to maintain user sovereignty let's take a look at the circulating supply 377 million okay total supply so they haven't they still have only at 40 percent so there's some dilution potential here. And um, yeah, so the current market cap is 11 million. The fully diluted market cap, 30 million. So that's a bit of a red flag uh, in that there's a lot of dilution that can still come, still take place. But let's see, 34% were to the shapeshift customers. So that's good. 32% to employees and shareholders before decentralization. So the question is, okay, well, that answers my question, how they vest over three years. So they can't just dump them all in the market yet. 2024, they could. Um, anyway, I know I kind of like this. Who are the founders? Again, Eric Voorhees and John, somebody calling himself John Shapeshift. But Eric Voorhees is among the top recognized serial crypto advocates. And uh, so a lot to, you know, these guys are, they're bankable uh, in general. I'm not saying go buy this. All right, let's come back to this. Interesting. Well, you know, always, it always makes sense to look and find out more about them. And it, it looks interesting. Let's see what our indicators show. Uh, we have a bullish ERI, TSI signal and bell. All right, listen, guys, this is one to pay attention to. And what else? What do you see there, you guys? It's a bullish engulfing candle. It uh, it it's not quite that rocket indicator. If this closes toward the high of today, shapeshift token is going to explode. This is our that would be our rocket indicator. This is one of our favorites. So again, let me turn on the uh, ERI signaling and the arrow. There we have a, a TSI signal and bell. All right, this is one we want to pay attention to. Uh, again, it's on Coinbase. So I'm going to move that up in the list. All right, this is where you find our gems. When you find things that are moving, have nice charts. 
and our indicators are aligning, you can find some really great projects here. So uh, keep an eye on uh, Fox Token. All right, somebody wants to look at VRA. Let me just jump back real quick, see if there's anything else we might have missed. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, I, I don't know what. Well, that would be having a sympathetic move to Bitcoin. But uh, Bitcoin Cash hasn't really been a solid performer in the past. Anything else? Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash, Euro, GBP, same, same. Uh, Tether, no, Media Network up 29%. All right, let's take a look at that and then we'll switch gears, look at some other coins. Media network uh, up big. Let's see, what do we have here? Night, a big uh, candle there. We've got ERI, not really the ERS last week. We have TSI, Signal, and Bell going green. What do these guys do? Let's look at this chart here. I don't know if I trust that uh, volume. And this has a, a habit of, a history of selling off after it pumps. So... You know, this overall, is it a downtrending channel? This is something's pumping this. Probably it's on like a KuCoin or something. And uh, they've pumped it up artificially on low volume and they're going to dump it down. So that's not one we're going to keep an eye on necessarily. But I would uh, put an alert on it maybe in here just to see uh, and say, all right, this thing's moving. And at that point, I'd go look at it, uh, look it up online, find out what they do. All right, let's say you look at uh, VRA, then we'll do looks rare. Uh, Veracity yeah, was one we had been talking about uh, in our other services. Uh, interesting project here. So VRA uh, is still in its downward trending uh, trend channel. I would uh, keep an eye on this, but certainly, most certainly have an alert letting us know when it's kind of breaking above local resistance. So right above this level, just above that on VRA, I want to know about that and crossing up here. Uh, so that would be a potential buy. So I put buy question mark, and that would tell me to go back, look at the chart, reevaluate, but let's look at the signals. We have an ERI, but this is, you're right here. We have an ERI, a TSI over 20, and a signal line kind of flat, kind of flat, but turning green. I, I would probably wait on this, to get, wait for a bell. This thing just feels like it's on. Yeah, it's a very low volume. But uh, it does it is a good project we've looked at in our other services. So uh, I would give that, I'd probably wait on that. At the very least, Pirate J is wait for it to get above, but maybe set an alert, another alert here above the 50-day EMA. Give us an earlier buy warning with one question mark. And that way we're kind of lagging into this. So we're being notified. I do like that it's kind of held support right in that range. Okay, so, but we want to see signs of strength on this and kind of see our indicators push up, but also see a price action get above resistance levels indicating it's it's ready to push higher. So that's what I would say for that. Looks rare. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, kind of hard to find. It's going to be on, looks like probably on Uniswap, but uh, it doesn't say that. Looks rare is on KuCoin here. So yeah, looks rare's chart does look uh, interesting. Let's look at the indicators. Uh, a bit overbought on the daily. Uh, that's when I'd look at the weekly, though. The weekly is going to signify the longer term trend. That's what you want to watch for on these. So weekly breaking that twenty line, looking good. You know, daily is a bit overbought, but the problem here is that it's just it's still in a downward trend. I, I'd want to say I see when it's back above. Let's just say so that psychological level above 10 cents that's where we'd want to be watching for looks rare and then giving it a buy signal right there okay uh to go back and look at it uh, our indicators turning higher on the tsi anyway on the uh, weekly but the daily looking a bit overbought on the tsi so i'd be careful here plus it's still in that trend channel so uh not an entry uh, i would recommend at this point even though we kind of have a key. Well, we don't we have a key, a, possibly a bell forming on the trend indicator, but I would wait for that since we had the take profit signal yesterday. Okay, but uh, beware of these low volume coins. Yeah, VRA, good long term project. So, uh, guys, that's all we have time for today. Nice one hour class. Again, if you'd like to learn more about uh, these indicators, just go to cryptomastery.online and the link is in the description down below. You can find out how to uh, get a hold of these. Also, our trade checklist is at moonstream.io 
slash trade checklist. And uh, also for our highest level training, the M3 Trader, uh, which gives, we have access to me daily in a signal, private signal chat. And we do Wednesday classes, a little deeper dive into the broader markets, uh, DXY, total market cap, and uh, some other more advanced uh, strategies that we'll use there. That's uh, moonstream.io slash M3. You can find out more about that. Or if you just want our indicators, just go to cryptomastery.online and you can pick up these and get a free month if you sign up for the uh, six month offer there for the indicators. So the best we've used, they're the backbone of all of our trainings. And you can find out more about those there. If you'd like a longer term, uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, we may be adding that to the website soon. All right, everybody. Uh, and then please again, like and share if you're watching on the YouTube replay. Uh, we'll talk to you guys again next week and uh, enjoy this little market rally. We'll keep you posted and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, everyone.